you know, fear and excitement are actually the same physiological response. It creates the same response inside your body when you're excited about something than when you're afraid of something. So when I'm feeling super nervous or when I'm feeling fearful, I literally say to myself, I'm excited about what I'm about to do. I'm excited about what I'm about to do. And just that little trick, and it is just a little trick, you're tricking your mind into replacing that fear with excitement. Your body already knows it's the exact same thing within it. So it's how your mind is perceiving that feeling. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! <sighs> Today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about fear. And probably no better time to have this as the topic of discussion as I just came out of a very fearful and fear filled uh, weekend. And you guys are going to be learning more about that. I'm sure over the next couple of weeks, uh, but just went to uh, an incredible event led by Steve Weatherford out in park city, Utah. And it was filled with a lot of uh, breath work, but more on the fear side, a lot of cold water experiences, climbing a mountain in shorts, a lot of cold exposure, a lot of cold. And there was fear uh, in every one of those instances. But what I realized in that experience is that fear is actually a good thing. It's a very good thing. And if you think back to our very uh, roots, you think back to like caveman times, fear was critical. If, you, if, if fear wasn't there, then you would get eaten by the lion. You would get eaten by the tiger. The reality is in our modern world, we don't face those types of fears, uh, hopefully, uh, on a regular basis. But there's different kinds of fears that pop up in all of our lives, whether that's public speaking, whether that's you know going on a first date, whether that's having a difficult conversation, uh, all the things that surround uh, kind of this modern world and modern life that we live. But fear is still super, super, super important. The important thing that I want to convey through this episode is to become more aware of the fear, becoming aware of where that fear is coming from, becoming aware of the things that you're feeling when fear arises, and then most importantly, to be able to take that fear and not only overcome it, but to be able to use it, use it for your power, use it for the passion uh, that you bring to whatever that experience is that's causing the fear inside of you. And so if we look at just the definition of fear, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. So we all know that's what fear is. But again, in this modern world, the stakes are just a lot lower when it comes to fear. Not to uh, belittle or make light of any situations that you could be facing in your life. Obviously, things like health scares, things like um, death, things that are going on with family members and maybe even in your own life. Uh, that is a very real fear and no different from the fear that the caveman was thinking when he went outside the cave. Uh, so I don't want to make light of very serious situations. But the reality is what we're talking about today is the fears that come in and out throughout our daily lives and those fears that we can um, bring ourselves to a place where we can better manage those fears and those emotions that come with them. So I found an awesome article. It's by Jack Canfield and it is seven strategies to move past fears. And that's really what I want to go through and kind of outline in this episode. So how do we move past the fears? Because if the fears are there, the fears are always going to be there. And again, the fears are good. How do we move past them and how do we use them for good? So the first is to become more aware of your thoughts. It says thoughts produce emotions. So if you want to change how you feel, change your thoughts. Whenever you feel fear, retrace your mental steps and observe what you were thinking. What thoughts led to your feelings of fear? Once you identify them, it will be easier to resolve them. 
And so as I go through each of these strategies and each of these steps, I want to bring in some application from this weekend. And so, for example, one day uh, we went out to a lake. Again, we're in Utah. It was 39 degrees outside. Uh, there was some snow coming down. And as a group, we were all going to get into this lake. And obviously the lake is very cold. And so as we drove up to the lake, um, the guide that was really instructing us throughout the weekend, I was in her car, Dr. Tricia Smith, uh, incredible, by the way, definitely follow her. I believe it's Dr. Tricia Smith on Instagram. Um, just a, just beautiful human being inside and out. Um, as we arrived and we parked, she asked us like, like be aware of the feelings that are going through your body right now. Be aware of the fear and where's the fear coming from. And so we are able to take time and purposely become more aware of those thoughts that are in our mind. And some of them are very easy, right? You know, I'm fearful because it's going to be really cold. Okay, great. But what is that fear? Where is that fear really coming from? Is it the fear of like, I'm going to freeze? Is it, I'm going to get hypothermia and die? Or could it be the fear of experiencing the cold in front of these 20 other people? all of which were from very diverse backgrounds, very powerful people, very successful people. And that would clue you into, oh, it's actually your ego that you're afraid of. And it's being exposed in front of other people that you're afraid of. But just know that that feeling that you have, that instant, like, I'm, I'm fearful. What is it that's making me fearful? What are the thoughts that are surrounding the fear? Because once you name them, then you can overcome them. Number two says, choose more positive thoughts. So you can't rid yourself of negative thoughts simply by not thinking them. So when that fear enters your brain, you can't just tell your brain, don't think about the fear. Because if I sat here in front of you and if you can hear my voice and I said, don't think about pink, pink flamingos, guess what you're thinking about? Pink flamingos. So you can't just say, don't think about it. The law of replacement dictates that you can't replace something with nothing. You have to replace it with something else. So when you notice yourself experience a negative fear producing thought, replace it with a positive thought instead. So for example, he gives, if you want to become a best-selling author, be on the lookout for thoughts like, well, what if publishers reject my manuscript? Instead, visualize what will happen when a publisher does accept your manuscript and agrees to bring your book to market. And so in those moments, when we were approaching the lake and we're about to get into the cold, as that fear started to sink in, and I thought to myself like, man, what if, what if I just can't handle it? Like, what if I just can't get myself in the water? Or what if when I get myself in the water, what if I just can't get my breath uh, to regulate and I can't find peace in that moment? We'll just completely switch that thought. Well, what if I can? What if I do get into the water and what if I am able to be at peace? What if I am, what if I am able to control my breathing? And what if I have the most incredible experience that I've ever had with this group of people all experience the same thing at the same time. And as you start to think about and replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts, an actual reaction and change happens in your body. And that's ultimately how you're going to overcome uh, that fear when it sets in. Number three says, notice the physical effects of fearful thoughts. So observe the physical sensations you experience when you think of fearful thought. You may feel fear as a sinking feeling in your stomach, a tightening in your shoulders and chest, or an elevated heart rate. For me, that's, that's a big one. Notice what you feel and then consciously replace them with sensations that you'd rather be experiencing. And this is super important. It says, focus on how positive emotions such as peace, joy, show up in your body as a rush of warmth or a tingle of delight. Imagine yourself experiencing those sensations instead and your fears will be neutralized. So similar with replacing the thoughts, the negative thoughts with positive thoughts around what is causing the fear. Now start to be aware of the feelings. Like when you start to become fearful, what does it feel like? For me, heart rate going up is a really quick indicator, a really good indicator for me that something is happening that I'm fearful of. 
And so if I can think back to how I feel during a positive situation, during a positive emotion, the feeling of joy, the feeling of peace, the feeling of happiness, and I can actually go to a place where I can let my body and allow my body to feel those things, then those things, again, you can't replace something with nothing. So I can't replace that feeling of my heart rate going up and me getting super nervous. I can't replace that with just saying, heart rate, stop going up. I have to actually replace it with a good feeling. So what does it feel like when my heart rate's going down? Well, it feels like I'm at peace and I'm, I'm breathing and I'm, I'm calm. I start thinking those thoughts and I start feeling those feelings, which enables you to overcome it so much quickly. The key here is you have to replace it with something positive. You have to replace it with something positive. So it's awareness and then replacement, awareness and replacement. Number four says use positive affirmations. Utilize affirmations to create a more positive, success-oriented mindset. Affirmations are powerful statements that describe the reality you want to create, and they are a powerful antidote to fear. So here's how they work. Imagine the reality you would like to create, then form a positive statement that describes it as already being achieved. That's super important. You're describing it as in present tense, like this is already happening or has already happened. So for example, I am so happy and grateful now that I am a New York Times bestselling author. By stating it as already been achieved, you create a tension between what you are saying and what you're experiencing physically and what your mind knows to be true. So if you're feeling one thing, but you're saying another, there's friction there. And it allows your mind to take over what your body is experiencing. It says your subconscious doesn't like this tension and will begin to work in overtime to resolve it, prompting you to take more action and become more aware of resources that will help you achieve your goal. So as we were entering this cold water, I had to consciously think positive thoughts. And one of the best ways that I know how to do this is, you know, fear and excitement are actually the same physiological response. It creates the same response inside your body when you're excited about something than when you're afraid of something. So when I'm feeling super nervous or when I'm feeling fearful, I literally say to myself, I'm excited about what I'm about to do. I'm excited about what I'm about to do. And just that little trick, and it is just a little trick, you're tricking your mind into replacing that fear with excitement. Your body already knows it's the exact same thing within it. So it's how your mind is perceiving that feeling. Oh, it's actually excitement. It's not fear. And so as we were entering the water, I had to literally trick myself into feeling excited. Like I'm so excited to get in here, even though the fear was there. I'm so excited about this. This is going to be an incredible experience. And that allowed me to overcome that fear, go in the water and freeze in a good way. Number five, charge your visualizations with powerful, positive emotions. So take this affirmation, for example. I am so happy and grateful now that I am a New York Times bestselling author. When you include a positive emotion in the statement, such in that example as happiness or gratitude, you open yourself to experiencing that emotion in your body, giving your affirmation far more impact. So just as the emotion of fear can paralyze you, intense positive emotions can motivate you toward greater success. Gratitude is a big one um, for me. In those moments where I'm fearful, uh, let's say I'm getting up, giving, getting up to give uh, a speech in front of a large group of people. When I start being grateful for the opportunity, little words like I have to go speak versus I get to go speak. And I'm grateful to be able to go speak just that little switch in my mindset, but then attaching that emotion of happiness and gratitude to it. And again, talking about it as though it's already happening or that it's already happened. Not, you know, I'm, I'm happy when this is going to happen and this is going to be the result of that. It's man, I'm so grateful for having this opportunity to do what I'm doing right now. Um, this, that little switch makes all the difference in the world. Uh, number six, be a real realistic about risk, a practical and often overlooked strategy for overcoming fears to make sure that you're not risking more than you, you can afford to lose. So to grow and achieve greater success, you have to risk something. Just make sure that you can bear the loss if you don't succeed the first time. 
Jack goes on to say, my advice is to begin by taking on smaller challenges and work your way up. If you want to start your business, but you need a guaranteed income each month to pay your mortgage instead of debt, maybe run your business as a side gig until you have enough clients to quit your job for good. So perfect example this weekend, the first night when we were first introduced to the cold water uh, experience, and you know, we did it for two minutes. We didn't go in there for 10 minutes and try to create the most difficult possible situation for us to all face. It was just two minutes. And it gave me this feeling like I can do anything for two minutes. Like two minutes is, is that's nothing that'll go by very quickly. Now there was still fear to get in, but once I got in, I knew that I'm not going to be in here forever. I'm not going to die of hypothermia. And so you have to look at is the risk outweighing the positives that can come out of what you're doing. And a lot of that just has to do with common sense. Like, if there's fear and it's coming from the realization that like, Hey, I'm way too leveraged in this decision. Like I'm putting myself way too far out there. Or the way I like to look at it now is like, I haven't earned the right to do what I'm doing right now because of the risk. Like I haven't worked my way up. I haven't started small and built towards that, which I'm now super fearful of doing. And it gives you the ability to take a step back and say, Hey, maybe this isn't a good thing for me to do right now. Maybe I should start smaller and work my way towards that. Um, and a lot of that has to do with your ego. Um, a lot of peer pressure when there's other people doing it at the same time, uh, when you're experiencing these things in groups. Um, but you just have to be aware that like, it's a very personal thing. Like your life experience is your life experience that nobody else can tell you what is too much in regards to the risk that you're taking and whatever you're doing that's causing that fear. Number seven. And lastly, celebrate your successes. You've overcome countless fears to become the person you are today, whether it was learning to ride a bike, driving a car, or kissing someone you liked for the first time, taking risks and opening yourself to new experiences is always a little scary. But when you face your fears and take action anyways, you build up confidence in your abilities. The situation you're facing now and how you and how your fear is manifesting may be different than what you've experienced in the past, but you already know how to overcome your fears. You spent a lifetime doing it. So I encourage you to follow Emerson's advice and do the thing that you fear. It is the best possible way to grow as a person and achieve more success in life. Every successful person I know has been willing to take a leap of faith, even though they were afraid. And I can tell you just from my experience this past weekend, every time that we did something that was that I was fearful of, every time we got into the cold water, when we went and climbed a mountain in just our shorts, which yes, that's what we did. Just our shorts. We climbed a mountain and it was snowing and it was cold. Every time we did it and we got out of it, I felt absolutely incredible for having overcome that fear. And then the next time we went to do it, I had that much more confidence, not saying that the fear went away, but I had that much more confidence in knowing that, Hey, I did it for two minutes. I'm pretty sure I can do it for three. But again, when it goes back to being realistic about your risk, I didn't go from two minutes to 10 minutes. I didn't go from two minutes to even six minutes. Like we would go from two to maybe three or four, but having the confidence of already been in that fearful situation, having been able to control my emotions, to control my thoughts, to be aware of the things that were happening and to replace those with good thoughts, with good emotions, and then overcome it, step in the water, sit down in it and experience it and then get out of it and have that gratitude and that just feeling of accomplishment of doing something scary. You guys have heard me say this on this podcast so many times. If you seek discomfort, the world will deliver you pleasure. If you seek pleasure, the world will deliver you discomfort. So life is all about seeking discomfort, which means life is all about experiencing fear. Life is all about putting yourself in situations where fear has to come up, where fear has to arise in you. But it's through moving past that fear and through a lot of these things that we talked about today that will get you to ultimately be able to overcome it and have those incredible experiences. And every single time you do, they build upon each other and they build upon each other and they build upon each other. And it doesn't have to be the same thing. It doesn't have to be going from two minutes in the ice water to four minutes to six minutes to eight minutes. It can be doing two minutes of ice water, you know, cold plunge, and then it can be a cold shower and then it can be speaking uh, in public. And then it can be having that difficult conversation that you've been avoiding. 
all of these things all work together in the confidence that you build in one, even in a completely different situation, that confidence that you had to overcome the one will help you overcome and be able to embrace and enjoy the process and the next uh, so much, so much easier. So really to close, I just want you guys to know that fear is normal uh, and it's a good thing. And you should seek opportunities to be able to feel that fear. Like that's what makes you feel alive. Like I've never felt more alive than this weekend when we did these fearful, fearful things. And it made me want to experience more of that to put myself in more scary, fearful situations so that I can feel even more alive and build more confidence to do other things that I've never done before. So fear is a good thing as long as you're using it and as long as you're able to go through these steps of being more aware of it and to be able to overcome it. So with that, guys, this is episode 161 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! Thank you.